crypto, the notion that SEC Chairman Gary Gensler is quitting, has swept Twitter. John Deaton, an attorney who is in favor of excerpt, has responded on the speculate the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission CSEC decision to appeal in the Ripple case has left many in the cryptocurrency sector scratching their heads. Nikolesh Dew, a journalist for Coindesk, clarifies the murky circumstances of the case, and Mr. Huber, a major player in the cryptocurrency community, discusses the implications of the court's verdict. Ripple's XARP sales have increased dramatically month over month despite the ongoing legal battles. But what does this portend for XARP, and how does it stack up against the cryptocurrency's turbulent history? It claims that the decision by the SEC to appeal the Ripple case is being questioned by both crypto attorneys and fans. This action has further complicated the already murky legal landscape around Ripple as a cryptocurrency. Quite a few crypto lawyers are even saying the decision itself doesn't really make a lot of sense, D added. Mr. Huber chipped in, saying that the court verdict had a silver lining despite the contentious appeal. Excerp was not ruled a security. The market was relieved by this clarification. Ripple has continued to sell Excerp despite the legal uncertainty. Surprisingly, the business has sold 2.22 billion XRP since the beginning of 2023 up significantly from the average monthly sales volume of 200 million XRP in the previous year. In the previous year, Mr. Huber reassured XRP supporters who had expressed worry that a separate group was buying up these large quantities of XRP. Despite the massive amount of transactions, Carrier CRP still outperformed the market. If we rewind to 2017, XRP holders rode a roller coaster of extraordinary highs and lows. Ripple's escrow feature launch resulted in a 400 increase in XRP's value, followed by a stunning 60 decline the next day. This was the first of several swings in volatility that kept traders on edge. By the end of 2017, investors who bought and sold XRP at just the right times witnessed returns of over 1,200. The tremendous volatility of the market, however, made it essential to have a plan in place to lock in gains and ride out the storm. The only winners would have been short-term investors. Most traders don't even bother with a plan. Since Judge Torres's judgment, the value of XRP has been steadily increasing, solidifying the cryptocurrency's place as one of the world's four most prominent digital currencies. Analysts have expressed concern that the current increasing trend may not be sustainable. The market mood indicators are flashing red, indicating that XRP has a tough road ahead of it. Attorney John Deaton, a pro XRP lawyer, has stated that the Securities and Exchange Commission CC actions against the crypto industry are motivated by a larger goal of safeguarding corporate capitalism rather than prioritizing investor protection. Deaton emphasized what he perceives as an assault against cryptocurrencies, especially in connection to the sex's activities targeting Coinbase and Ripple. He said in his speech, his speech focused on a variety of topics, including accredited investor requirements, the sexist strategy to regulating cryptocurrencies and its stance on retail investors in the Ripple case. Deaton states his view on X, Twitter, that the United States functions under a framework of corporate capitalism rather than a real, authentic capitalist society. He emphasizes numerous aspects of the current financial environment to support his point. Deaton said that the sex allocation of limited resources to Section 5 prosecutions, as well as its emphasis on targeting the secondary market on exchanges rather than combating fraud inside the crypto ecosystem, reveals a wrong set of priorities. He believes that this strategy has the potential to discourage innovation and limit the development of the burgeoning Bitcoin sector. Furthermore, Deaton emphasizes the sex hostility to retail investors serving as a mishikuria, friends of the court, in the Ripple case. Deaton's approach implies a reluctance to examine retail investors' perspectives, reinforcing the idea that the regulatory body may favor the interests of bigger financial institutions above those of ordinary investors. Related, blockchain has the potential to save financial institutions $10 billion by 2030, according to Ripple. Deaton raises a significant worry concerning a perceived double standard in crypto legislation. He blames the SEC for failing to engage in discussion with proactive firms such as Coinbase. Simultaneously, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler met many times with Sam Bankman, fried, the former CEO of the defunct FTX exchange. The differential treatment raises questions about the regulating body's efficacy and impartiality, 
as well as the overarching structure for digital assets. The sexy's divergent approach to several distinct sector participants might inhibit the establishment of creative startups, while possibly rewarding more established big corporation. In the sexy's complaint against Ripple Labs, in Judge Annalisa Torres finally ruled on the party's summary judgment requests on July 13, 2020. 2022, the SEC and Ripple Labs both came out on top in the 34-page ruling, which implied that certain purchases of Ripple's XR coin constituted securities, while others did not. This verdict was applauded by crypto enthusiasts since it seems to indicate that XR tokens are not securities. As regulatory pressure on the business increases, this verdict might be a major boon. After raising over $1.03 billion through unregistered securities offerings, the SEC filed suit against Ripple and two executives, including co-founder, executive chairman of the board, and former CEO Christian Larson and current CEO Bradley Garlinghouse in December 2020. The SEC has not been shy about going after Bitcoin firms, but this is their most publicized case to date. Ripple's XRP token was the third most valuable cryptocurrency at the time of the filing, behind Bitcoin and Ethereum. It was widely anticipated that Ripple would put up a formidable battle, given the company's resources. In the end, the institutional sales were completed with high net worth investors like hedge funds, private equity firms and the like, and on their terms. These companies bought large quantities of XRP tokens from Ripple, and the company used the money to improve the market for XRP and develop uses for XRP's ledger. The court noted how far Ripple had gone to sell SERP, and how it seemed to link the price of the coin to the company's own efforts. Ripple's claims that the buyers intended to use the tokens as currency or for some other consumptive purpose were rejected by the judge, who pointed to lockup provisions and our resale restrictions in the sale agreements as evidence. On the contrary, the judge concluded that all parties understood the sale of XRP to be an investment in Ripple's efforts. The judge seemed to be persuaded by the sex's argument that the institutional sales were an unregistered securities since they met all four prongs of the Howey test. When it came to the programmatic sales, however, Judge Torres sided with Ripple. Ripple used standard bid, ask transactions on several exchanges to unload a part of its XRP holdings. Neither Ripple nor the purchasers were aware that they were really buying the tokens from Ripple. The judge's decision relied heavily on this detail. Programmatic buyers did not know who the seller was and could not have been directly investing in Ripple's future efforts, in contrast to institutional buyers who knew they were purchasing from Ripple and were ultimately investing in Ripple's future efforts. The judge reasoned that purchasers of XRP tokens can be motivated by factors unrelated to Ripple, such as the overall volatility of the cryptocurrency market. It was also implied in SEC filings that many programmatic buyers were entirely unaware of Ripple's existence. Judge Torres' decision shows that the XRP coin itself is not a security, especially in light of the split. The verdict caused a sharp increase in the price of Arpshire, since most of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges have restored the token's trading capabilities. This decision seems to imply that, barring specific subjective expectations of buyers and sellers, most tokens are not inherently deemed securities. The business world applauded the outcome. The judge found that the distributions in the third category, which included tokens given to Ripple personnel as part of pay packages and to third parties as part of efforts to expand the ERXRP ecosystem, did not meet the first prong of the Howey test. The SEC has already signaled its intent to file an appeal of the decision. According to a court document the SEC filed on July 21, 2023, in its case against Terraform Labs, those portions of Ripple were wrongly decided, and this court should not follow them. This was in reference to the programmatic sales. A further statement from the SEC reads, Ripple conflicts with and adds baseless requirements to Howa and its progeny. 